So just to be clear, guys, before I talk about Thursday's game, I do do this show with Dennis Finley. He wasn't able to make it today, and throughout the NFL season at times, you may see just me or just Dennis. Just know that's because of our schedules. So let's talk about Thursday night football. Look, unfortunately, the Bills defeating the Dolphins in the manner in which they did, beating them 31-10, to 10, is not the storyline. It's Tua's injury. Tua suffered a concussion Thursday night against the Bills, making that three total in his career. The first two occurred during the 2022 season, so now everyone's asking the same question. Should Tua retire? Look, obviously, that's the best solution for Tua. But when it comes to professional athletes, especially football players, walking away from the game is a hard decision to make. Everybody's not Andrew Luck. And let's be clear, too, as well, as fans, isn't that a reason why we love football and sports in general? It's to see athletes battle through personal circumstances and overcome odds. Look, Tua is 26 years old and doesn't turn 27 until next spring, making this season and the next few seasons that follow the prime of Tua as an NFL quarterback. So, yes, with the money he's making, he's set for life. He's one of the highest paid QBs in the league. However, there's a brotherhood in football that stems beyond money, and the bond Tua has crafted with his teammates and the Dolphins organization will make this one of the hardest decisions he'll have to make. I personally believe this decision should be left alone to Tua and Tua alone. But look, Yes, I believe all fans are saying the same thing. Tua should retire. It's the best decision for him to make. When you see, as we all saw in Thursday's game, his arms fence up and you see his hands curl in, that's a scary sight. This being his third concussion, if it were to happen again, he might not be able to walk away. So yes, financially, he's set for life. And risking a life-threatening injury to me just doesn't seem like a smart decision at this point in his career. And now this being 2024, there are numerous ways he can still stay connected to the game of football without risking his life. And I believe he should start exploring some of those options. Because truthfully, if he does step back on the field and God forbid does suffer another injury, that's not just on him. That's also on the Dolphins organization. And they will go through a hailstorm if that is the case. Because player safety and tool safety is more important than, you know, what he does on a football field. Let's be honest, as adults, knowing what to get friends and loved ones for holidays, birthdays, and special occasions can be a hassle. Sometimes giving just a card and cash can come across as lazy. Louis Cards remove that stigma and takes the hassle of gift giving right off your hands, allowing your gift to be the card. With different options and your ability to customize the card to your liking, you can now give someone a unique card, a premium card, the one and only card that is, in and of itself, the gift that keeps on giving. A gift that combines cash and a card. Louis Cards, the premier card of gift giving. Get yours today at louiscards.com. But guys, I, I do want to transition over to this. You know, the question I had in the third quarter, right after the pick six happened, was what are the Dolphins if they can only beat up on mediocre teams? Mike McDaniel hasn't won a big game at all in his coaching career with the Dolphins, and they've lost 12 of the last 13 times against Buffalo. And now after Thursday's game, they've lost six times straight. So look, your head coach and coordinators haven't figured out a solution, and you have arguably one of the best offenses in the league. You see Buffalo twice a year. You have endless tape on Josh Allen and Sean McDermott. And let's face it, beating Jacksonville week one was a lucky win. And the bigger headline in that game wasn't your comeback victory. It was what happened to Tyreek before the game. Now Skylar Thompson's replacing Tua until further notice. I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is shaping up to be another letdown season for Miami. And let me touch Tyreek real quick. While Tua was in the game, Tyreek only had two receptions in the first half for less than 20 yards. Are the offensive coordinators out of their mind? They have to do a better job of getting Tyreek the ball. That is their only job to try and figure out how they can get the ball to Tyreek. He is the biggest threat on the field with or without Tua. So if any team can shut down Tyreek, the Dolphins are virtually handicapped. It's just a matter of time before they crumble. So I want to give props to Buffalo. They did their job defensively, walking away with three picks, and one of them was returned to the house. I want to tell you guys about a couple of people we really rock with. Number one, Rubler, a social media app that appreciates you, and it's also Black-owned. This app is all about you. You can customize your feed so you can only see what you want to see when you open the app. You also get a chance to enjoy a safe environment where racism, harassment, hate speech, bullying isn't tolerated. And you can enjoy a fun, creative, mannered, respectful discourse. And to be honest with you guys, since using this app, 
I've cut down my social media usage on other apps completely in half. I like to say this app is similar to Instagram and YouTube had a perfect baby where everything you loved was in it and everything you hated was out of it. So guys, check out Rubler, a social media app that appreciates you. Number two, excess sports nutrition. Guys, crack the seal on one of their many flavors and keep winning. And speaking of Buffalo, I believe it's time to say that the Chiefs are the only consistent threat to Buffalo, or at least ask the question, are the Chiefs the only consistent threat to Buffalo? Because let me remind you, coming into this season, Buffalo dropped prestige in their roster, and yet over the past couple of weeks, Josh Allen has proved why he's a top-five quarterback, and the Bills have proved why they're a real threat in the AFC. And in Thursday's game, as proficient as Josh Allen was, going 13 for 19 for 139 yards, the game belonged to James Cook, who ran through the Dolphins. He walked away with two touchdowns, 11 carries for 78 yards, averaging seven yards a carry. And why I compare this team to Kansas City last year is because sometimes you make up in quantity what you lack in quality. Let's look at Buffalo's wide receivers. Shakir gets five receptions for 54 yards. Kincaid gets four receptions for 33 yards. And Johnson gets a big play on one reception for 33 yards. It's clear Josh Allen has targets he can get to, and he's spreading the ball around. Look, in the offseason, it was reported that Deion, it was reported from Deion Dawkins that the pressure to win in Buffalo was as high as ever. We talked about that on this show and that Josh Allen had barked, had been barking a lot more since the roster turnover. Look, around the league, the question in the summer was, could Josh Allen and Sean McDermott get the job done in Buffalo and bring home a Lombardi trophy? And now the question after week two in the 2024 season is, is this level of dominance sustainable for Buffalo? Look, I'm not going to get ahead of myself after this being week, just week two. But I said this after week one. Buffalo has the makeup of a scary team. Their roster can be overlooked when evaluating them. But they have all of the intangibles of a championship team. When it comes to guys making effort plays, they play hard and they play up to their competition. Look, this season reminds me of Kansas City last year. Everyone said they would be beaten. Everybody said they would be overmatched. But in the end, they came through. Like, I'll hold off on championship predictions, but I will say this Buffalo team has playoff merit for sure. And who knows? Maybe this is the year they make it out of the AFC.